Welcome back. It is February 5th, 2022, and we are continuing our series, My Favorite Thing About. And today is the book of First Peter. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we just come before your throne this morning, we pray for your Holy Spirit presence. We pray that that your spirit will just infuse our minds with the wisdom and knowledge to understand those things that are important to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Here is the list of scriptures that we will cover today. And as always, I encourage you to go to the PDF version of this sermon for the notes. Okay, First Peter. The first recorded letter that Peter wrote was to believers in the provinces of Asia in what is now Turkey, somewhere 64 AD. There are many favorite things to choose from in this letter. A promised inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. The truth that our redemption was purchased with something far more valuable than silver or gold, but our redemption was purchased by the blood of Jesus. A call to holy and righteous living. A call to love each other and to use our spiritual gifts. An invitation to cast all of our worries and cares and anxieties on Jesus because he cares about us. All excellent and worthy favorites, but none of them made it to the top of my list. And what is at the top of my list might just surprise you. Because my favorite thing about First Peter is that there is a villain in the story. Which brings us to our scripture today. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, the devil would like us to believe that he doesn't exist, that he's harmless, he's misunderstood, he's not to be taken seriously. The fact that we don't take him all that seriously fits in well with his plans. But notice some of the words Peter used to describe this harmless and misunderstood being adversary. Now the definition of adversary is one one's opponent in a contest, conflict, or dispute. So our opponent. He also uses the word enemy in different translations. And an enemy is a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. So we have an opponent who is actively opposed to us. A synonym for both of those words is nemesis, the inescapable agent of someone or something's downfall. So his goal, our opponent, who is actively opposed to us, is our downfall. He also uses the word prowl, which means to move around restlessly and stealthily, especially in search of prey. So this actively opposed opponent who wants our downfall is restlessly and stealthily searching for his prey. A synonym to prowl is skulk, to keep out of sight, typically with a sinister or cowardly 
motive. And finally, the word devour, to eat hungrily or quickly. And here is a list of the synonyms for the word devour. Consume, destroy, wipe out, annihilate, devastate, ravage, ruin, wreck, afflict, torture, plague, overcome, and overwhelm. So then, not a cute little devil in red pajamas with a pitchfork. In fact, an opponent who is actively opposed to us, who is actively seeking our downfall, and he does so in a restless and stealthy way because he wants to annihilate, devastate, ravage, wreck us. Notice the words of other Bible writers. Isaiah chapter 14. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth. You have you who once laid low the nation. Zechariah 3. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. So, who is the accuser? Who is our accuser before God? Satan is our accuser before God. John chapter 8. Why do you, this is Jesus speaking, why do you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil. And you do, and you want to do the desire of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks, he speaks lies. He speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So whenever Satan may be whispering in your ear, no matter how sparkly and interesting it is, it's a lie. Second Corinthians for such men, this is Paul talking, are false prophets, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the full armor of God and take your stand, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. So once again, not a cutesy, red pajama wearing, rose carrying, misunderstood being. Notice the words of Ellen White. What mental anguish Christ passed through. What grief. What torture of mind. He was face to face, not with a hideous monster, as, in, as is represented with bat's wings and cloven feet, but it's a beautiful angel of light apparently just from the presence of God. This is the way in which he comes to man as an angel of light, disguising his temptations under the, an appearance of goodness and making men believe him to be the friend rather than the enemy that he is. It is in this way that he has deceived and seduced the race, beguiling them with subtle temptations and bewildering them with specious deception. Satan, 
clothed in robes of brightness, appearing like an exalted angel, tempted the world's redeemer without success. But as he comes to man, robed as an angel of light, he has better success. He covers his hideous purposes and succeeds too well in deluding the unwary who are not firmly anchored in eternal truth. And finally, notice the words of John Eldridge from his book, Epic. I am staggered, he says, by the level of naivete that most people live with regarding evil. They don't take it seriously. They don't live as though the story has a villain. Not the devil prancing around in red tights carrying a, pitch, carrying a pitchfork, but the incarnation of the very worst of every enemy you've met in every other story. Dear God, the Holocaust, child prostitution, terrorist bombings, genocidal governments. What is it going to take for us to take evil seriously? Life is very confusing if you do not take into account that there is a villain that you, my friend, have an enemy. You and I have a powerful enemy and his highest aim is to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll do it in grand ways like through the Holocaust or worldwide pandemics. But those are not the only tools in his vast toolbox. He's craftier than that. His plan to destroy also includes you. If tempting you with sparkly things will work, well, how easy was that? If winning the lottery will destroy your life, woohoo! If he can use so-called Christians to harm and derail you, even better. If he can cause you pain, and then get you to turn to drugs or alcohol or food to numb the pain, he is like pig in slop. If he can use beauty and popularity and the need to fit in as a way to distract and ruin you, happy days. If he can get you to read innocent books about wizards or watch funny shows about friendly ghosts, he will do it. No matter what devices he uses, his end goal is always the same, your destruction, both now and for eternity. So if he can do it in the appearance of something good, great. If he can do it through evil purposes, great. He doesn't care how he gets you so long as he gets you. And you, by yourself, with your flimsy armor, can't stand against him. He'll eat you for lunch and he'll come back for more. Remember my favorite slogan. Meddle not in the affairs of dragons, for thou art crunchy and taste good with ketchup. So, there's a villain in this story. We have an enemy that we can't, in our own power, stand against. But praise God, we are not just told the truth about the devil. We are also provided with the only way to be victorious in our fight against him. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. 
He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand under it. He will pro provide a way out if we ask. But if we insist on fighting with our flimsy armor, he'll stand aside. But we've been promised there in 1 Corinthians that if we ask, if we are being assailed by Satan and we ask God to rescue us, he will provide a way out. Remember Ephesians chapter 6, put on the full armor of God, which ties in with 1 Corinthians 10. So that you, when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand. Stand firm with the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of gospel peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. We don't have to fight temptation. We don't have to fight the devil in our flimsy armor. God has provided armor that can extinguish every flaming arrow that the evil one throws at you. Just go, get, go to your closet and put it on. Hebrews chapter 4. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And James chapter 4. Submit yourself then, he says. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have not been left unprotected against Satan and his evil devices. We have everything we need to stand against him. And it's been provided to us by God. 1 Peter 5.8 reminds us that we must always be on our guard because there is a villain in the story and the conflict is real. Never forget what his end game is. But also, never forget that he's a loser. Revelation chapter 20. He sees the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. When the thousand years was over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth. So that thousand years isn't going to change him. Gog and Magog to gather them for battle. In number they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across, across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people and the city that he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. Satan, for all his wiliness, for all his craftiness, for all his end goals of your destruction, is a loser. Never forget that. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this reminder that there's a villain and he is our enemy. And the only thing he cares about is our destruction. And he will do whatever it, it takes to accomplish that goal. He's a liar and not to be trusted.
and we need to stay on our guard. But also that you have provided everything we need to stand against him. We just have to put it on. We just have to call to you when we need you. Thank you that you have provided a way out for us. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for this warning. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it, everybody, for this week. Next week is Second Peter. So we will see you then. Bye.